Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to get some thoughts off my chest about an article that I read today on the church news website. An article by Jason Swenson where he's recapping a, um, I don't know if it was a devotional or like a multi-state conference broadcast from President Nelson and um, his wife, uh, Sister Wendy Nelson. He was joined by uh, Elder Uchtdorf and his wife. President Nelson uh, shared a, a message and he uh, talked about the heartland. For all you uh, Mesoamerican folks out there, uh, don't worry, he, he was not implying uh, any favoritism towards the heartland theory. This broadcast was for, I think, uh, stakes in Kansas and Oklahoma. President Nelson said, let us focus on one of the greatest gifts our Heavenly Father has given us to center our lives on Him and His beloved Son. I'm referring to the Book of Mormon. It is a gift to us from God. It is the keystone of our religion because it contains the very heart, the center of his doctrine. President Nelson uh, noted that he and Sister Nelson study the Book of Mormon every day. Quote, I repeat a promise I have made before that if you will read from the Book of Mormon every day, you will make better decisions every day. Some wise and simple but profound words from the prophet. One of the announcements he made at this uh, um, broadcast, this devotional uh, for saints in the Oklahoma and Kansas area, was uh, about a, I think it was a $2 million donation made to the First Americans Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, where they will provide uh, resources uh, for people to look up uh, their family history and, and that of those who have uh, who are descendants of Native Americans of course he concludes the Book of Mormon is the finest tool of conversion available your daily study of the Book of Mormon will transform your life it will help you heal your hearts your relationships and your homes truths contained in the Book of Mormon will center your lives on Jesus Christ and his gospel. Several other speakers in this broadcast, which I'm only going to talk uh, about uh, his wife's, uh, Sister Nelson's uh, remarks. Check this article out. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description as well for the article. Sister Nelson, she spoke um some some words that really kind of gave me a, a little bit of a deja vu from um, I think it was a BYU devotional from years ago where she talked about you know uh, imagining or, or just kind of the, the what if um, you had heard that Christ had already come back to earth and uh, had met with uh, some of the leaders of the church um, this was kind of the same. Uh, it kind of gave me that same vibe. She starts her talk. I, I'd really like to find the full transcript of this talk. She says, uh, life's uncertainties are many. The weather, one's health, one's work, and even the actions of others are all uncertain. There is, however, one thing you and I can count on. One day, each one of us will have a personal interview with the Savior. I think I've heard that um, from several other church leaders. And I think in, in that letter from uh, Elder Von J. Featherstone that he put in the cornerstone of the Atlanta, Georgia temple, talks about he, he talks about his interview um, with the Savior. Something to think about if you haven't uh, pondered that before. She says, that meeting is going to happen. We cannot run away and we cannot hide. There is nothing anyone can do to avoid or to cancel that meeting. 
Latter-day Saints can also be certain of President Nelson's love for each of them. He wants that inevitable individual interview with the Savior to be wonderful for all. The church president's teachings and invitations, including those shared at general conference, can help everyone prepare for their own divine interviews. President Nelson, she says, is functioning as your interview coach when he pleads with you to remove the worldly debris from your life, repent daily, remodel your home into a sanctuary of faith, minister in a higher, holier way, make time for the Lord every day. Since becoming president of the church, President Nelson has delivered 31 general conference messages. I didn't realize that, but that's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of talks <laughs> in in the short time that he's been the president of the church. Our our prophet on the earth today. And it makes me want to go back, you know, and I've been feeling this for a while, but kind of brushed it aside like no, I need to stay current. But, you know, after reading these uh, statements from Sister Nelson, it makes me want to go back and start, you know, really doing a, a deeper dive into um, all of those talks from President Nelson. I went back and I've got an Excel spreadsheet with uh, conferences uh, uh, or the, comp the general conference talks all the way back to 2017, October or April of 2017. So, I, I went back and I highlighted all of those um, talks. Makes me want to go back and, and look at all those invitations. And, you know, I, I, I still feel like I'm drinking from a fire hose when I, when I even think about that. Sister Nelson gives us an invitation as well and says, um, I invite you to study and then study again each one of these 31 messages as you prayerfully seek to know what you can start doing or stop doing right now and then do it you will be preparing for your interview with the Savior sister Nelson testified that the Holy Ghost has guided her own life as she prayerfully listened to and pondered the inspired messages of General Conference. As we eagerly, diligently, and prayerfully study the words of the Lord in the scriptures and as delivered by prophets, seers, and revelators, the Holy Ghost may highlight some words to ensure they lodge deeply into our hearts and minds, or he may show us how to immediately apply some words to our lives and sometimes he may bring to us words that were never spoken there you have it president nelson is our prophet he's the president of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints but most importantly he is our personal interview coach with the savior That gets me all psyched up, make, makes me want to go right now and, and, and start prepping for this interview. Uh, uh, my wife and I, we were talking about that a little bit last night. Interviews, you know, with, with priesthood leaders and, and in the callings that I've served in, I've, I've learned a, a lot of different perspectives. Um, there are people out there that uh, come from all different walks of life and, and have different experiences and, and, and backgrounds. And, and um, you know, uh, uh, bishops, elders, quorum presidents, stake presidents, uh, these, these men are not licensed therapists. But with the mantles that they hold and the keys that they hold um, they they are qualified to to give uh, divine counsel um, 
to uh, to those who who go to their priest leaders for for help, uh, whatever uh, form of help that may be. I would just encourage you to do all that you can to to strengthen that relationship uh, with your Savior, your personal relationship with the Savior. And I know that as you do that, then things will become much more clear. The clock keeps ticking, and we are running out of time. I will talk to you later. Mm -hmm.